So right now, let's bring on two of our guests. Brandon Darby is a former left-wing activist, and Brandon Morse is creator of MisfitPolitics.co, two of my favorite people involved in the conservative movement and culture as well. So guys, the first question, we'll start with you, then you can answer. What is the biggest obstacle to conservatives as they enter the cultural battlefield? Penny loafers? Penny loafers, penny loafers. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely penny loafers. No, the biggest obstacle we're facing right now is actually our own pop culture, our own mainstream. And we need to get over this fact and stop being these political hipsters. We've been fighting the mainstream for so long that we consider it, we consider it now a bad word. We fight against it. And we can't. We have to stop doing that. The mainstream isn't good or evil. It's the mainstream. And what we put into it dictates what our pop culture is. Mm. We need to start getting back into it, taking a part in it. Because without it, we're not going to win any hearts. And the first step to winning a mind is winning a heart. Brandon? Brandon, too? Brandon, too, yeah. I, I would agree with, with, with Brandon, one. Um, you know, I, <laughs> for a long time, you know, coming from the left as I did, mm -hmm. I, I had a certain picture in my mind of what a conservative was. And even at the point that I had really become conservative, it still <clears> took <throat> several years before I would, I would come out, before I would realize that I actually was a conservative. I'm, I'm not that person over right. there. I'm not Karl Rove, and not to insult Karl Rove. You don't wear but sweater vests. I don't wear sweater vests. I don't look, I don't, you know, I haven't. I mean, not you know, that sweater vests are I get are, a little rowdy. Are bad, I, I, but you know, I, I, <laughs> and, and they so. They are, let's be honest. They at some point, are. I began to realize that conservatism means I believe that people are served better, that life is served better, and the individual, the, that families, that people in need are served better by a small group, a charity, a church, or a, or a, a local community, right. and not a far-off federal government. That is what makes me a conservative. I believe in our Constitution and the importance of right and wrong and having a, a, a moral compass for government and for citizens in a personal right. life. That makes me a conservative. I believe in a free market. That makes me a conservative. Now, what art I like... That has nothing to do, like, I, I still like the same things. You know, I yeah. traveled Europe for a year and played guitar for a living, like, uh, on the streets and ate cheese and bread, you know. Yeah. I'm still a conservative, though, you know. Right. And these are things that typically, I think, in, I think the, the left of center politics and left of center media likes to promote the notion that people who do interesting things or who can live outside of the box are somehow... Um, are not welcome in conservatism and I think that's right. really the issue. So explain something to me here. How is it that we went from what the 50s every the cool kids or where these were the people who were like oh let's we need to listen to the man and mm -hmm. how did this all get turned around? How is it that being anti-authority mm -hmm. turned into nerdery or dork stuff? How did this happen? Back back around the 20s uh, a bunch of Marxists fled Germany and uh, they founded something called the Frankfurt School. And these guys sought to bring Marxism uh, to the United States. But seeing that they would fail because they can't take American culture head on. We were into freedom and still are to this day. Right. But they, they knew that the, the, to succeed, they basically had to go underground first and start from the roots. So they infiltrated and put leaders in our schools. They put them in uh, uh, acting troops, you know, uh, tried to get them on the silver screen, stuff like that. Next thing you know... There's a whole culture building around it. Right. And now it's become our pop culture. Now it's, now it's what they're selling to the kids nowadays. You have uh, punk rock groups daring to call themselves punk rock who are advocating big government. All, it's, all that started with this one school. And they've had a lot of time and practice to build up. They know how to act. They know how to uh, uh, get into the real foundations of any institution and make it a leftist institution. And the bad, the, the worst part about it is, is, I mean, this is where, this is what the youth is, is paying attention to nowadays. This is where, you know, like the silver screen, for instance. You said uh, you saw Iron Man, mm. last conservative, you know, Robert Downey Jr., awesome guy. You love. Uh, he's a conservative, or I, libertarian. That's what player, I hear. So. That's what I hear. But, uh, you know, those, those movies are few and far between. Right. You know, uh, most of it is leftist uh, leaning. And this is what the youth is listening to. They're listening to people like Green Day. Oh, and that's not even punk rock. No, that's it's not. But pop. they call themselves it's punk rock, punk which drives rock. me crazy. Oh, my gosh. I know. Worst band I, ever. <laughs> exactly. Besides Nickelback. They used to be. Or Creed. 
or Korean. Okay. Same thing, same thing. Canadian version, American <laughs> version. So, and this is something that we see with, you know, you came from, I mean, you came from the left, like the bowels of the left. The bowels of you, the left. You were... I don't know if this is the right way to say it. You were Occupy kind of before there was Occupy. So you see all of these people, they position themselves right where the information comes out. They control how information is distributed, how it's crafted. You've seen this. How can conservatives, from your perspective, get in there, kind of do the same thing or take it over? Well, I think the important thing is, it's like Brandon one discussed a minute ago with the Frankfurt School, and then in the 60s, you saw a resurgence, and they actually tried to directly take it on. Like, the, they began to call the police officers pigs, right? And that mm, became a yeah. popular term. And then they lost that revolutionary push, right? So they decided to go more underground again, and, and now they don't talk about the police being pigs. They say, we support the police, but this cop is racist who got right. shot. Or, so they went Shame back to subtlety. Right. So I suggest we call people out on things and I suggest we participate. You know, like I go to shows, I go to music. Um, sometimes when I go in certain towns where people know who I am because of the stances I've taken, it's a little awkward. But <laughs> I, I, just, um, I just don't worry about it. You know, I just go and I right. participate and I call people out. When I'm at a cafe and I'm talking late at night and we're drinking coffee and philosophy, you know, talking about philosophy right. and politics, um, when someone says, oh, you're against health care, I say, no, I'm not against health care. I'm against I'm just... what Barack Obama is doing with health care. They say, you're against, you don't believe that climate changes? I'm like, I believe climate changes. I don't believe in the human causation mm -hmm. of climate it's change. It's about messaging. It's and about this is, messaging. yeah. taking over the narrative, and now they're able to, to direct what kind of conversation you're going to have before you even have it's it. A and that's, and that's one of the things that you do with misfit politics mm -hmm. is you combat those narratives, and you essentially recraft them. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, one of the things that we do is we take Alinsky tactics and we use it against the left. And a lot of people think, well, Alinsky's a bad guy. Why would you do that? You can use Alinsky tactics and it's no it, 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 it's it's nothing new to the good guys. I mean, if you look in the Bible, one of my favorite stories is the prophet Elijah, mm. you know, and while they're they're doing the uh, the burning um, of the, the, the <laughs> while they're in the contest on the hill. Right. He's making fun of them the entire time and just trash talking them. You know, it's not a bad thing to trash talk. Ridicule's and, a powerful. Yeah, exactly. Life. And that's what we at Misfit Politics do. We we isolate and ridicule an issue, and uh, blow it out of the water. Um, the most one, the, the the one that we're most popular for is Attack Watch. <laughs> Attack Watch. Attack uh, Watch. Is that going to be a ringtone? Is it? That's a ringtone now. It right? is a ringtone. Okay. It's yeah. I have it you, on my phone. I yeah. need to put it on my. It's also, so it, it, does also that. It, it also comes in Spanish if you want that. Are you serious? That's awesome. Oh, yeah. But no, that's exactly what you guys do. And you pushed the attack watch, you know, for, for those who, who may be unfamiliar, that was when the administration mm -hmm. said, we're going to basically spy on conservatives basically on Twitter. Basically turn in anybody who them. says anything uh, bad about you President You shut it Obama. down within 24 hours. It was, yeah. Uh, Ezra Doulis made the video. Uh, give him all the credit for it. But um, we released that video, and it just, it, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It ridiculed them into shutting up. Right. And, and uh, because it was a dumb thing to do. It hadn't been seen since what? Uh, Nazi Germany, Russia, uh, Stalin's Russia. It, it, was, mm -hmm. it was ludicrous. And so we called it out like that. And we made fun of these people who would even think of something like that. <laughs> all right? Because it's dumb. And I, I often joke, I have the easiest job in the world because the people that I'm making fun of, they write my jokes for me. I don't right. have to do anything. I, I hardly ever have to exaggerate. And it's effective. It's effective. It's very like effective. with the national gathering or the NatGet on Twitter. Oh my that's <laughs> that's a joke in and of itself. Now you've been to watching this, yeah. and of course they all hate you. But mm -hmm. don't don't you get the the sense that this is all marketing? That's one of the things that the left is really good at. They spend all their time on marketing, nothing on substance. It's it's all marketing. It's the same thing with the most recent CPAC in D.C., where what you see is a narrative that's only pushed out by a few people who have a lot of followers, or it's mm -hmm. only pushed out by a few people with a lot of resources. So what's happened with the Occupy movement is they've lost a lot of mainstream support because they've shown themselves to be what the far left always is, right. um, which is ridiculous and, and violent you yeah. know, and dangerous. Right. Yeah. Um, so they're having their gathering in Philly. It's gone on from the 30th, and it, now it's going to the 4th, you know? Um, Right. We've had a lot of arrests already, you know, and the police are being called pigs. It's, and still, it's still the same violence that right. we typically see. Right, but All they marketing. use the same tactics with the Occupy movement and with mm -hmm. this that, that, that they criticize 
you know, uh, corporate America for using. You have right. images of, of like attractive women, which most of the women there, I don't know, I think are very attractive, like <laughs> culturally. They have these images of beautiful women with little skirts walking over right. the cities. And, and, and the, the messaging is much like what what a, um, right. a singles night or a ladies night bar owner would well we're going to have yeah. to we're going to wrap this up right now but we this is a conversation we can continue having Definitely. brandon darby brandon morris misfitpolitics.co thank you guys so much for thank both being on with me this afternoon